this video we're going to lay out the vectors and create the toolpaths to cut the open sign that you can see on the screen. This is a longer version of the tutorial. There is a shorter version that has less detailed explanations in it that show you how easy and quick this would be to do when not going into such depth. Here we're going to look in detail though at all the different operations including creating the vectors for the border and the drill holes, importing a piece of clip art for the open text and then calculating a flat bottom v-carve, two profile toolpaths and a drilling toolpath. Let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software. So let's come over and click on the icon to create a new file and for this job we're going to specify a piece of material which is 15 inches in X and 10 inches in Y. I'm going to set Z0 for the material off the top of the block and we're going to specify a material thickness of 0 0.5 of an inch. And for the drawing let's check the box here to set our XY0 position in the middle of the part. Now this job is not going to involve any 3D models, only 2D and 2.5D and toolpaths, so I don't need to be concerned with the modelling resolution. We can just come down and hit the OK button in order to create our basic workspace. For the border for our sign, we're going to create two ellipses. So let's click on the icon, draw ellipse. Anchor point is going to be in the centre at 0, 0. And the first ellipse I'm going to specify is going to be 12 inches wide and have a height of 7.5 inches. Let's hit create. The next one is going to have a width of 13 inches and a height of 8.5. Again, I'm going to hit create there and that will generate our second ellipse in the 2D view. Now we can see we've got two elliptically shaped vectors that we've drawn. Now the next piece of geometry that I want to create is actually going to be imported from an external source and this is a piece of clip art that's come from the website www.vectorart.com and the people on the website there have kindly allowed us to use this in the tutorial and supply this for you to work with. Here we're going to click on the icon to import vectors from a file and from the project folder we're going to select the file open underscore sign dot eps and hit the open button there. When we import a file from an external source its location will be governed by where it was saved at from the system it was drawn in. So in this case we can see a little bit of the design that we've imported just up and off our part. Sometimes you may not see it at all. So the best thing to do after you import an object if you don't see it clearly is to come over and click on the icon here to zoom to fit. That will just zoom out your 2D view until all the vectors in the design are contained within the window so that you can clearly see where they're located and that allows you then to move them into the position you'd like them to be in for the job. There are various ways that we can move and resize a vector object. By default when we imported this it's selected and you can see that denoted by this kind of dashed purple line that we've got here. If I click on a selected object again, then I go into transform mode, I get this sort of four-way arrow for the cursor that you can see there. And if I click when I can see that, then I can drag and move the objects into a new position, and wherever I let go is where that will now be positioned. As well as using this to drag around, I can also use the handles around the outside here. If I click on the corner and drag there, then I can resize the object holding the shift key down will resize it around the center of the object not holding a key down will resize it around the opposite corner. In this case I'd like to be a little bit more precise about the positioning and size of this so rather than use the dynamic editing tools with the object selected I can come over click on the icon here to align selected objects and come up and click on the icon at the top here and when I click on that it will align it both horizontally and vertically in the middle of my part. Let's go ahead and hit close. Next I want to resize this so again with the vector still selected I'm going to click on the icon to set selected object size I'm going to make sure link XY is checked and that the anchor point is set to the center and I'm going to adjust the width to be 9 inches hitting apply and close there. So you can see it's very easy for me to edit an object either dynamically or with particular values. 
Now if we click anywhere in the background we can deselect that vector. I can re-click on the icon to zoom to fit so that we've got that focused within our 2D view. And the final data that I want to create for our design is a couple of holes that we're going to use to drill this to create mounting points for the sign. I want to place those halfway between these two ellipses here horizontally across from each other on the part. There's lots of different approaches to this but so it's easy to follow we're just going to create a couple of circles and give you the exact location of those. So if we come up and click on the icon to draw a circle the center point for the first one is going to be at a location of minus 6.25 in X, 0 in Y with a diameter of 0.25 of an inch. So if you enter those values and hit create we'll see that appear in the right place there. Now we could mirror to create the one on the other side or as we're already in the form here let's just change this from a negative x value to a positive x value so positive 6.5 y0 diameter 0.25 and hit create there and close. As I say we've used that method purely to make it easy for you to follow in this particular video but there are lots of other ways we could have created those by um, generating some construction geometry and snapping um, or using things like guidelines to place those in the right place. Lots of those other features you'll see covered in detail in the main set of tutorials. For us though that represents all the vectors we need for this part and we're ready to go over and start thinking about calculating the toolpaths that will cut this on the CNC. Once we're finished with the design side of things we can click on the icon here. What that will do is minimize our design tab on the left maximize the toolpath tab on the right here. Now the first thing we do before calculating any toolpaths is to come up and check our material setup. We do that by clicking on the set button at the top of the toolpaths form. Now I can verify the values that I used for my job setup. So I do want to cut this with Z0 on the top of the block and with a thickness of material of half an inch. However the XY0 datum is currently set to the middle of the part. Now I could keep that if I wanted to and as long as I set up my CNC machine with the same date and position then it would cut correctly. However at this point I may want to change it to the lower left or one of the other corners of my material in which case I can do that and you can see that's moved this red square to the lower left there and it's shown me that that's now going to be my X0, Y0 when I calculate the toolpaths. I have no 3D model so I don't need to worry about the next section. I just come down here and look at the rapid Z gaps and the home start position and make sure these are safe and suitable for my setup. The rapids need to clear any hold down mechanism I'm using like clamps and the home position just needs to be appropriate for the job. Once I'm happy with that we can hit OK and it's important to note that if you do plan to actually machine this example then you need to make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters for each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling you have available and whatever material you're planning to cut these toolpaths into. So now we've got our geometry drawn, we've set up our material so we know what the setup is going to be on the CNC machine when we output this and we reference the two together. Now we're ready to tell it the particular toolpath types we'd like to use in order to cut the different areas to achieve the shapes that we want. First thing I want to do is machine between this inner vector here and between the open text. So I'm going to select this um, border vector here, then I'm going to place the cursor between the N and its tail. I'm going to click and drag up and to the left partially enclosing all the vectors that make up this design. By doing that, dragging from the right up to the left, that's going to make sure it selects all those objects. You can see though that that has deselected this oval because that was not part of that selection there. What I need to do in order to select multiple objects or to add objects to a selection is to hold down the shift key. So if we do that now and click on this then that will just be added to the selection of vectors that I've got in the 2D view. Now I've chosen those vectors we can come over and tell the software what type of toolpath we'd like to use to cut them. In this case what I'd like to do is create sort of a beveled edge around those shapes coming down to a flat bottom. 
And the way we do that is by using the VCARV toolpath. So I'm going to click on the icon here for the VCARV toolpath. We're going to start at the um, top of the material, which is zero. And what we want to do is come down to a particular cut depth. And in this case, I want to make sure this option for a flat depth is checked. So by default, you may find this is unchecked. And that would mean that it's just going to try and V-carve all the way down to the full depth of the tool. What I want to do is govern that flat depth in this case, and I'm going to set that flat depth to a value of 0.2 of an inch. So it means it's going to machine down with the V-cutter until it gets to 0.2 of an inch, and then that will flatten off. And we'll see that effect when we get to the preview. Next, we're going to select the tool. We're going to use the V-shape tool. So hit the Select button. And from the tool database here, I'm going to choose the 90 degree V-bit. I'm just going to take the default settings for this, in this case, and go ahead and hit OK. Now if I use just that tool, then it's going to take a very long time with such a small point to machine my flat area. So what I'm going to use is create a combination of two tools here by checking the box to use a flat area clearance tool and hit select and I'm going to choose the quarter inch end mill from my tool library in the tool database. Now it's important to note here that the tool database is something that's completely user configurable so you can enter your own tools into here, speeds and feeds that are appropriate for the type of applications that you use those tools for. Here again I'm just going to take the default settings, hit OK. Next we can choose whether to do an offset or raster when we clear out the flat area. I'm just going to use the offset option here. I'm not going to ramp in this case or use any of the other options that I've got. I'm just going to come down, choose an appropriate name for my toolpath and hit the calculate button. By default when we hit the calculate button the software will open the 3D view so that we can see the toolpath displayed there and the preview toolpath form here. The 3D view I can click and rotate we can see our toolpaths that we've created there drawn for us. I can indicate the visibility of them by checking or unchecking the boxes next to the toolpaths in the list. Now even though we used a single toolpath operation, it's created two toolpaths. The flat tool is clearing out the majority of the material. Then the V-cutter is going to come in, clear out the smaller areas the flat tool couldn't fit into and also give us the nice sharp corners pulling up into the angled areas of our design. Now if we want to see those in another way, so this is just showing us the actual path the tool will follow, then we can preview it in a virtual block of material. I'm going to come up here and change the material we're using. I'm going to choose a cherry colour rather than the metal colour we had there. I'm going to go back to our standard material colour here so it won't be shaded in. And we'll choose the pocket toolpath first and say preview selected toolpath. And then we can see the material that's going to be cleared out with our quarter inch end mill. Now I could change this for a global fill colour if I want, so maybe we'll pick a dark red there to see that area that's being machined. Now if we select our V cutter and preview that, we can see that machine out the rest, so cutting out these areas, using the small step over and then pulling up to give us all these nice angled shapes, so essentially creating a bevel around our design there. Now the preview is very useful because it shows me pretty much exactly what the part should look like when I cut it. So if there's anything not correct at this stage, then I need to either make changes to the toolpath or tooling, or I need to make changes to the original vector geometry itself. The beauty being that I've seen that in the program before I've gone out and run any toolpaths on a piece of material and potentially wasted time or money. So the main thing is at this point I just need to look at this and say that looks correct and so I'm ready to proceed and calculate my next toolpath that I'd like to cut. Let's close the preview toolpath form and I want to go back to the 2D view to select the next vector. Sometimes it can be beneficial though to see both the 2D and the 3D view simultaneously. To do that we can go to view and I'm going to tile the windows vertical so I see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. Now I'm going to click in the 2D view to deselect the vectors and I'm going to select the first circle here and shift and click to select the second circle there. Now what I want to do is come up and choose the option to create a drilling toolpath. I'm going to set my cut depth to be partially through the material. I just want to really drill a couple of pilot holes 
and I already have the quarter inch drill tool selected from the tool database here. I could choose the option to peck drill which means that the tool will retract as it works its way down to that depth based on whatever pass depth I've got set for the tool and that can be helpful if I need to clear chips as it works its way down. I'm just going to take the default settings for this, change the name if I want to, hit calculate and there we can see we've just generated a very simple toolpath which I can preview if I want to see what that's going to do. So not much going to happen there with that, just machining a couple of locating holes on the left and the right of our design. Next if we close the preview toolpath form I'm going to select the outer vector here, the border of our sign and I'm going to profile around that to add a beveled edge. So let's click on the profile toolpath icon Start depth is going to be zero for this toolpath. I'm going to cut down to a depth of 0.2 of an inch and select a 90 degree V bit. So the same tool that we used before when we machined out the area inside the ellipse and the open text. This time I want to machine outside of this vector. Again, I'm just going to take the default settings for this and notice I have the advanced toolpath options switched off here so I have a simplified version of the form. If your form is longer than this, then you can just uncheck the box in order to go to the simple version or just fill out the appropriate bits of the form. So we'll call this toolpath Profile V90. That just indicates to me I'm profiling around with this V-bit tool. I can calculate that now. And if I want to in this case, maybe I want to change the toolpath colour for this when we preview it to a dark blue and say Preview Selected Toolpath and if we just maximize the 3D view we can see how that looks in the list. Now because I've changed that to a specific toolpath color I also would need to come up and change this to a specific toolpath color so we can pick our dark red and select that for both of these toolpaths. Now I can use different colors for different toolpaths to indicate where they're being machined. So there we've just clicked on the icon to go back to the ISO view. I can close the preview toolpath form, go up to view and we'll tile the windows vertical again. Now notice that our vector selection has changed and that's because we clicked on another toolpath in order to change its colour. And you can see if I click on a toolpath it will change my vector selection for me. Now for my last toolpath I want to just click in the background to deselect everything and select this vector again so we're going to select the outside shape. I'm going to come back up to the profile toolpath form. This time I want to cut all the way through the material to cut the part out so I can either type in the value there or a nice shortcut to pull up the thickness of my block is to put in Z and then hit the equals key on the keyboard and that will just extract the material thickness that we set for this part. Now sometimes it can be beneficial to go slightly past that thickness. So we could enter a value something like 0.52 of an inch here. That will ensure that we're going to definitely cut the part out because we're going slightly past the bottom edge of our material. However we should be careful because we only want to do this if we have a sacrificial sheet on the bed of our CNC. You don't want to end up cutting into the table itself so be aware of that if you're going to use a value larger than the thickness of material that you've specified. Next we're going to select our tool from the tool database. I'm going to choose a quarter inch end mill and just take the values we can see here for this tool and hit OK. We're going to cut outside our selected vector. I'm not going to worry about ramping into the job but I am going to add tabs. The tabs are little pieces of material that will be left holding the part we're cutting out in place so it's still attached to the main stock of our material. We can specify the size of these. I'm going to make these 3 8 of an inch by an eighth of an inch high. Click on edit tabs to place them and I'm going to put four of them and I'm going to check the box here so the first tab is at the machining start point and click add tabs and there we can see those have been placed there. I can edit their position by clicking and dragging. I can also delete tabs just by clicking on them as well. Here we'll just take those four that we've created, hit close give this toolpath an appropriate name and hit the calculate button. The software will warn us that we're going to cut through the base of the material and this is important as I mentioned before because I want to just double check that I did actually intend to do that.
In this case I do, so we can hit OK. Now if we maximize the 3D view and we preview that toolpath, first thing we see is these tabs that are going to hold the part in place. But the second thing I see here, which just shows how important the preview is, is the fact that I've actually made a mistake. And this is deliberate, really to show you the benefit of the preview. We can see clearly on the preview that I've machined away my outside chamfer on the part. And that's because I've used exactly the same vector in order to cut out around as we did for our angled tool here. There's a couple of ways that I could make that um, not the case or I could make the change there. One would be to draw a new vector and cut out around that. However, a quicker method is for me to add a toolpath allowance so that we slightly overcut the outside of our part to make it bigger and leave some of that chamfer there. To do that, I can just come up and undo the last operation in the preview toolpath form because we haven't yet exited it. So that's gone back to the state it was at before we ran that cutout. I'm going to hit close and with the profile cutout toolpath selected, click on the icon to edit it. Now the ability to add this allowance is something that I can only specify if I can see the advanced toolpath options. So far we've used a simplified version of the form. To access those I can check the box here and come down and find the area for the allowance offset. In this case I want the part to get bigger so I'm going to put in a positive allowance offset of 0.15 of an inch. I'm going to come down to the base of the form and just hit calculate Software will give me the same warning about cutting through the material, which I can just hit OK for. We've recalculated the toolpath, but we're only really going to see that this has worked at the point where we say preview that selected toolpath. And now if we zoom in, we can see by offsetting that out by that 0.15 of an inch, we've now been left with our chamfer. Maybe beneficial for me to just change that to a slightly lighter color to make it easier to see that bit of the job. So there you've seen the value of the preview function. Once we can look at that and say that part now looks correct, this is the job that I actually want to cut, then we're ready to save the toolpaths into a format our machine tool will understand. If we close the preview toolpaths form, all we would do is select the toolpath that we want to output, click on the icon here to save that toolpath, then we need to make sure the box at the top is unchecked so that we can save one toolpath at a time choose the post processor. Now this is the file that's going to convert the data inside the software into a language that our machine will read. So here I'll just choose a standard G code file. You need to make sure you pick the one that's appropriate for your CNC or the control software you use and then click on the save toolpaths button, give that a name, hit save and now we could take that across, set up our material, our tooling, our date and position and run that first toolpath and then subsequently we could go ahead and just save each of these in turn, clicking on them and then hitting the Save Toolpaths button to create the file. As well as saving the toolpaths, which I'm not going to do in this case, what I am going to do is save the whole file. When we save the whole file, we create something that we can open at a later date in order to make edits or examine to see what we did when we actually set up the job. To save the file itself that will include all the vector and toolpath information, I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and we'll call this Open Sign Underscore Toolpath, and we'll just save that into the project folder there so that you have a copy of it if you want to take a look. And that pretty much concludes this. A particular video. Here you've seen a longer version of this tutorial where we took a blank part, we created a simple border vector, imported a vector clip art design, located that in the middle of our job and resized it accordingly, drew a couple of drill holes and then went over and created a, an appropriate set of toolpaths in order to cut the file that you can see here. If you want to watch a shorter version of this where you can see it more in real time so that you can see how quick and easy this is to do if you're not having a detailed explanation at each stage then you can watch that version of the tutorial. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching.